The dragons are always looking for great money-making inventions, but will they think 21-year-old Roger Hines' business idea is worth an investment of £85,000? I'm Roger Hind. I'm here today with my product Rotomate. I'm looking for £85,000 for a 15% share in a business. I think you'd agree, an umbrella with no covering is absolutely useless. Yet for decades, rotary clothes airers stood in gardens unquestioned. Just one of four UK clothes era manufacturers is currently selling over 400,000 units per year, with millions of people every year leaving their washing to the mercy of the British weather, which is where my product comes in, Rotomate. It is a purpose-built, designed rotary clothes era which embodies a protective cover. Three panels are attached to the tips of the arms. At the centre, each has a Velcro fastening and a concealed weight forming a taut funnel lining that diverts rain away from the line and to the centre. I have won repeat orders from the UK's leading independent DIY store and from its main regional rival. And this week I have finalised an agreement with a wholesaler that furthers that retailing capability from regional to national. I'm now at the stage where my business is poised to reap huge rewards from a strong onward push. Thank you. I will now try to answer your questions. Roger Hines' confidence in his Rotomate shines through his pitch for £85,000 of investment for a 15% stake in his business. But Theo Pafitis is curious about the appeal of the laundry sector to such a young entrepreneur. How did you get involved in this? Um, how did I come up with this yeah. idea? You're 21. How much washing do you do? Uh, look, I'm fortunate. You know, my mum normally does the washing for me. Um, but to get to the point, how did I come up with the idea? Mum had put the washing out and she'd gone to work and I was 17 and she said, just do me a favour, if it rains, bring it in. And I didn't bring the washing in and you can tell the inevitable happened. The washing got soaked. It was at that point I thought there's a problem there and I thought there has to be a solution. If it's not for my own sake so I don't get told off again, for the sake of everybody else out there. That's why I came up with the idea. Right, and then you just decided to design it well, patent it. I decided to employ a patent attorney and, and that patent attorney has with me applied for a European patent which he insists that it's imminent this year. Right and tell me about the orders that you had from a large DIY. Okay. Have you got a further order from them? I do. I have a, a purchase order with me which can be provided to yourselves for a thousand units. Roger's giving an impressive account of his product development. Duncan Bannatyne wants to pick up on where he's got to in actual sales. So how many have you sold? To date, I have sold 550 units. OK, and what price are you selling them at? The wholesale price, from me to a wholesaler, is £11. Uh, however, they've been selling on the internet as well, at £24.95. The cost per unit is £7. Roger's margins seem healthy enough. But Deborah Meaden wants to know, does the business have the potential to deliver profits for an investor? Can you tell me what your business plan says in terms of financial numbers? What are you expecting over the next, this year, next year, year after? OK. For this year, I'm expecting to hit 8,000 sales. So you're going to make about £32,000 profit? That's correct. OK. For the following year, 2008, I anticipate 50,000 unit sales. For the year after, I predict a rise to 250,000 units. Basically, the wholesaler I've currently recently finalised the agreement with, I know for a fact, sell 26,000 units a year. 
this wholesaler is one of six. I intend to speak to the other wholesalers and make more deals to see national distribution. Rogers outlined ambitious growth plans for the Rotomate. Richard Farley is intrigued. Can I just have a quick look at it? Of course. <coughs> so the water doesn't come through here? This, this space is through here? No, it doesn't. And if it's windy and wet at the same time, does the water come through? Windy and wet at the same time? No, it doesn't. Hmm. And are you paying yourself a salary out of the business? Currently, no. I've tried to incur as little cost as possible. Does the business have a lot of debt? It doesn't, no. Let me just give you something to think about. I, I, I'd be, you know, obviously a few more questions to ask, but uh, at this point I'd be, off, I'd be tempted to offer you um, sort of half the money for about, you know, the percentage you're talking about, so 15%, something like that. So just to let the others know, that's what I'm thinking. Richard Farley has surprised his rival dragons with a slightly vague and very early offer, but it's only for half of the money Roger needs. Can he persuade one of the four remaining dragons to make up the rest? I'm not as excited as some of the other dragons, particularly Richard. Um, as you mentioned, there's about 400,000 clotheslines in the UK sold each year. That's from one of the four UK manufacturers. What's their percentage market share? 90%? No, it would be, uh, it'd be a quarter, um, because if one sells nearly 400,000 a year, then for business, for them to stay in business, the others, they must have to compete fiercely. They must be selling a significant amount, as in hundreds of yeah, thousands. Yeah, but that's where you, it, there's a certain flaw there. Don't make an assumption that if one per manufacturer is selling 400,000, it's very unusual to find that four of the main manufacturers will all be vying at market share at 25% each. I don't think the sales will get anything like the volume that you think, so I'm out. It's an abrupt setback for Roger. His lack of marketing now has driven Peter Jones away from a deal. Deborah Meaden is a marketing expert. Has Roger alienated her as well? I'm slightly disappointed that you don't understand the size of the market. The credibility of your projections is, as far as I'm concerned, shot. But I'm actually going to make you an offer, because I like the product, but I want 20%. Because I think a lot of work needs to be done on, to get this out there. So I would match Deborah's offer there. Hey, I think we've got two other dragons still yeah, left well, in we'll it. Just, let's just get what's the offer that's on the table. I like thought you got two. You're at 15%. She's at 20. I said around 15%. Around? Why don't you relax for a second? All oh, right. OK, let's just talk, ask, talk to So you would have a matching pair, right? Obviously, the other dragons are not out, so you want to speak to them. But Richard in one fell swoop be, has just taken another 5% off there'd you. Have to be, there'd have to be some talk about, um, about you know, your salary and all that sort of stuff. But that, that's, that's the offer that's on the table from the two of us. Roger has now been offered the full £85,000, but Peter Jones and Richard Farley have clashed over Richard matching Deborah Meaden's equity demand. Theopophetis and Duncan Bannatyne are still in. Will either of them rival the 40% being asked for? I think that the offer that's been made to you by Deborah and Richard is a very, very good offer. I wouldn't offer that amount, so I'm not going to make you an offer, so I'm out. I don't believe it's an investable opportunity for me because the product hasn't got the market that I think you envisage. So I'm not going to make you an offer. So you have got those two offers. But I think you need to really reconsider and reevaluate your position. For so what Theo's saying is our offer is a lousy one, <laughs> but he's not going to make a better one. The dragons are furious with each other. But in the midst of it all, Roger has a crucial decision to make. OK, well, to those that are out, thank you. Um, as regards the offer that stands for the, the capital injected and the advice and the assistance that can be provided by... Roger, Peter. Roger, just before you do this, and I'm sorry to cut in, because I want you to actually start questioning the deal that's been put in front of you. You were offered at the first deal by somebody half the money for 15%. Somebody came in at 20%, and now the whole deal's now at 40 I think there's something wrong with One Peter's hearing. One last thing, try and I think there's something wrong with Peter's hearing. I said, 
I'd like to hear more conversation, and I said around about your level. So for me, 20%, 15%, I mean, there's nothing disingenuous about it. It's just, that's probably, I mean, in some ways, as Duncan said, 130,000 pounds for your business is probably generous, you know. For me, I, I, I'm backing... Oh, oh, this is, this I'm is backing, cringy. For me, I'm backing, I'm backing you because I've seen what you've done between in the last four years. You're not... Well, listen, you can listen to these guys. Make better, they can make him an offer. Make an offer. In make, the make an offer. If our offer is disingenuous, right? Why don't you let the guys speak instead of rabbiting Because you're on. speaking. Make an offer, Peter. Go on, come back in and make an offer. Roger, would you like to give the two people feedback? It's one of the fiercest arguments between the dragons the den has ever seen. A bitter schism has opened up, with Peter Jones advising Roger not to give away as much as 40% for the £85,000. Where I'm up to in my thoughts is, um, because as I say, it's my first project, I want to see it through. I want to make it work. I know I need assistance in certain areas, and I do believe that both Richard and Deborah can, can offer with this. So I'd like to accept the offer. Terrific. Well done. Good decision, well Roger. Done. Well done. <laughs> After an incredibly tumultuous session, Roger is leaving with his investment. But in the den, the disagreements continue. 40% is outrageous. Well, he's, really he's, got, he's got profits. It's, tw it's, tw it's 21. If, yeah. it, if it was a, a more experienced, he would have negotiated down. He well, he wouldn't have got it from down. me. I've he never he wouldn't have moved down. down. Eh? You should have given him a better offer. Product. It wasn't the product I want to get involved in. But if it's not your Just product, like you, you can't... Well, you, you can't have it both ways. ways. You can't say it's not worth it. your mouth is. That's the whole name of the game. 21. Come on. No, I'll definitely say well done. But I hope it works for him. Roger, quite a marathon. Are you pleased with the offer you've got? Yes, I am. Not only the cash, but certainly the advice is uh, very useful. Was there any point at which you would have turned that offer down while all the bickering was going on? Why don't you let Make the guys speak instead of rabbiting Because you're on? speaking. There actually was, and it was something I was unsure about until I said I've come to a decision. It was very difficult, very difficult. Very, very well done. Thank you very much. Hello, my name's Jude Camplin. This is Chrissy Shaw. We've come here today for investment in our two companies, Evolution Solutions and Evolve Through Training. The investment we're looking for is £150,000 for 20%. Evolution Solutions is a construction company which champions women in the construction industry. That means that wherever possible, we employ women tradespeople. Evolution Solutions started trading in September 2005. Nerves are getting the better of Jude. She'll have to regain her composure quickly to stand any chance of persuading the dragons to invest. We champion women in the construction industry. Uh, housing associations have to hit diversity targets. We solve that problem for them. There are some environments men just can't go into. There's refuges, sheltered housing. We also have a lot of anecdotal evidence which also says that customers just prefer women in their homes. You know, that, that's probably because of the much televised pot bellied builder rummaging through your knicker drawer <laughs> that, 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 you know, gets that perception, but it's out there and it is about trust. Chris is going to talk about Evolve Through Training. Right. There's two sides to the business. As you've heard, there's the building company. We also have an academy, right? The academy is set out over three sites in Derby, and it was designed specifically to, give, to deliver good quality construction training to everyone. 
The Academy will deliver City and Guild's accredited training through intensive courses in five aspects of the construction trades. I'll hand you back to Jude. We want an academy and a construction company in every major city of the UK within 10 years. We also want to see a woman on every building site within five years. So thank you for your time and please ask any questions. Thank you. After a shaky start, Jude and Chrissy have made it through their pitch. They're asking for £150,000, but the 20% equity they're offering in return is split between two companies. It's an unusual deal, and Deborah Meaden needs some clarification. I need to understand those two companies. How does that work? Evolution Solutions has been trading a lot longer. Evolve Through Training is launching in August, as Chrissy said. OK, and what's the turnover on Evolve Through Training? We're probably looking at about 500000 in the first year. So there's no, at the moment, no turnover in either of the businesses? No, Evolution Solutions has been trading since September 2005, and up until April we turned over only about £150,000. And out of the £150,000, how much does that drop into profit? Uh, if I was, I'm going to be totally honest, uh, not a lot. This year we, we've made a loss. Are you offering us 20% of each of your companies? Yes, we're no, offering no, no, 20% no, no. of both, both of the companies. companies. So that's 20% that's split up, so 5% evolve through training, 15% evolution solutions. Hey, how does that work? How does that work? Well, what do you mean, how does it work? 5% of evolve through you're training. You're actually giving me 5% of one company and 15 over the other. You're not yeah. giving me 20%, are you? Well, all right, 20% is combined over no, both uh, companies. No, it doesn't work like that. One could be worth £100, right? And you give me 20% of it. That's 20 quid, yeah? yeah. Keep it simple. And the other Thank one you. could be worth... We are women. <laughs> <laughs> we do, I apologise, but we face You've this You've got a terrible day. attitude. I, I tell you, I, I, <laughs> on, that point, on, that, on that point, I've got a serious issue with that comment. Well, we... I've got, do you know how many women I work with? Yeah, I, yes. Do you want to have a guess? No, I don't know, but no, I no. can imagine. I no, can please imagine. have a guess. We've, I've no idea. I don't know, who, to be perfectly honest. You I don't, don't know, know who we are. You've pitched up. Asked for £150,000 yep. for 20%, which yep. is actually 5% of one company and 15% yep. of another company. Yep. You don't know who we are. You made a flippant comment about... It's not flippant. It's very serious No, you made a very flippant it's comment. It's very serious Because if you'd done your homework, you wouldn't have made a comment. Jude has incensed Theo Pafitis. Deborah Meaden tries to steer the discussion back to business. How about we start again and you talk us through your business model and how we make some money and just want to understand the business. Right. Can you explain to me why you think there aren't more women in the construction industry at the moment? If you've got 20 men and one woman vying for a position in a building company as a trainee, whether you like it or not, men still choose to take on men. That, that is a fact as well. And do you, do you know you're beginning to sound like a crusade? It's a campaign. A it's a campaign because there's an, it's a niche market. There's a niche in the market. Jude's approach to the business is not impressing the dragons. Peter Jones is ready to have his say. Using words like campaigning, using words like I want a woman on every building site. We do. Well, because do you, there are women do you out not there see the alienation? Do you not see the alienation that will ensue? No. Well, you've already got five dragons pretty hacked. Well, you know, I'm sorry about that. that I really am. Minutes, what are you going to do when you go out to the open market we, and try and sell your it, services? We've done it and we've succeeded. We have got the attention you, of housing you, associations you and have succeeded. that are, are You've very succeeded happy. at nothing. That's not strictly true either. You haven't got a business that makes any money and you haven't even started a trading business. Now Jude and Chrissy have been blasted by Peter Jones. With emotions running high in the den, Richard Farley steps in to find out what sets their businesses apart from rival construction and training companies. You've got a business, the evolution is about hiring out women, is that right? Or women and men? Men and women. Both. Men, men and, and women. women. Yeah. And the academy is for men and women. So yes. you've, got, you've got two, two businesses. Yes. The unique thing about the academy is what? We deliver not only construction training, but the whole package will address customer focus. Okay, so nothing to do with men and women. No, no. Then you've got this construction business, which is unique in what sense? Because we do offer women tradespeople as well as men. Okay. We give customers the choice. 
you're saying that your construction company, there is a demand out there for people who do want women. Yep, is that absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's slightly confusing because your unique selling point is that you've got a high ratio of women, but you still yes. have men. Yes. If you come and pitch an idea or your concept that actually said, look, do you know what? My most critical success factor to my whole business model is the fact that I'm going to focus exclusively on women. My whole business model is going to be based around putting more women into the construction industry in key areas where actually they add value. Really good quality people that are trained through you, Chrissy. They then move over to the business once they're trained yep. and you then tender the contracts exclusively. You are the female side of the construction industry. I think you now start to have a really good business. business. I don't know whether we can actually do that because of the Discrimination Act. But you know, this is something you should really find out because I think you should well, be we stopped, if we it's have. your unique selling point, yeah, then I, you but, should really but, find but out. What I want to say, and I'm going to complete here, is that is that what you've come in to try and pitch, you've pitched it in such a discriminating way. Your attitude has to change from focusing on the discrimination to focusing on the key benefit. I'm not going to invest in you. Um, so I'm out. Peter Jones has heard enough. He's the first dragon out. Theo Pafitis, who clashed with Jude from the start, has also made up his mind. You came here today looking for someone to invest in you a huge amount of money. If you'd done some homework, you'd have come up here in front of the five dragons and made a pitch that might have just persuaded us or invest in you £150,000. I don't believe you're investable, and I won't be investing, so I'm out. Now, I can't back you either because you haven't demonstrated that you've found a clear way forward, and, and so I think you, you need to learn those lessons before you, someone can just give you 150,000 to play with. And the, the uphill climb that you've got to undertake, I'm going to drop out as well, so thank you. With Theo Pafitis, Richard Farley, and Peter Jones all out, Jude and Chrissy's chances of securing £150,000 are hanging by a thread. Has Deborah Meaden heard anything that will tempt her to back the pair? Jude, Chrissy, I think you might have be onto something if you listen to the advice. Do you know my big concern? Is watching you, Jude. When you get advice, there's a big sigh and there's a but. You're doing it. Exactly <laughs> that. <laughs> that is exactly the point. Yeah, but That's I listen it. to everybody the thing and everything. Is, what we, we are in here today to look for business opportunities. What you brought to us was a debate that you instigated over discrimination, over women in the workplace, over crusading and campaigning. That's how you started. We have helped you to bring this back onto a business platform. But every single time we try to talk about something you don't like to hear, you're very, very defensive. Anyway, you're doing it again, Jude. You're not listening to me. So I'm afraid for that reason, I'm out. It looks all but over for Jude and Chrissy. Only Duncan Bannatyne now stands between them and expulsion from the den. I've just found you rude, offensive, very sexist, very discriminatory. I employ a lot of women. I employ more women than I employ men, and they do a fantastic job. Would I employ you? No. Would I invest in you? No. Never. So I'm out. I've heard worse. If you've heard worse, it's just something, it's if you've just heard something. worse and you keep hearing it, yeah, but and you keep going to a place and you're going to yeah. try going in without that chip on your shoulder. You're the only person who's right. We're all wrong. Yeah. Everybody's wrong. You've got a massive chip on your shoulder no, and a haven't. terrible attitude. That's your problem. Fine. With the words of a furious Duncan Bannatyne ringing in their ears, Jude and Chrissy are leaving the den empty handed and the dragons are smouldering. Well, that was the hardest work trying to understand a business in that model that I've ever, ever heard. Did we discuss business? No. Were no. there actually any...? Do you know what? She hasn't got a chip on her shoulder. She's finely balanced. She's got one on each shoulder. Yeah, well said. Well said, Theo. Jude, Chrissy, are you, are you blaming yourselves? Nope. They loved me, didn't they? <laughs> Were you aggressive or nervous? How does that work? Well, what do you mean, how does it work? That is, unfortunately, my manner. I am... You're like that? Yeah, yeah, I say what... We both say what we believe in. What about the chip on your shoulder? Um, no, not a chip. Don't I think... get frustrated. And when you want to change something for the better, and the reason you can't is because you're a woman, you know, it does vex me. I've heard worse. Um, I don't apologise for how I am. 
I have to be like this to survive in the industry. And if you're not, you just leave it. Now, mankind has been cutting wood for thousands of years. We've got advanced tools like saws to help us do it. So you might think no one could come up with a new way of making the task easier. Well, think again. Cumbrian-based duo Richard Boness and Steve Tonkin believe they've done exactly that. Hello, Dragons. I'm Richard Bonus. I'm the inventor and shareholder of the mul Truncator Multicut Saw Horse. We've come here to ask for £125,000 for 30% of our company. Hello, Dragons. My name's Steve Tonkin. I'm project manager here at Truncator, and I'd like to introduce you to our saw horse. The Truncator Saw Horse is a revolutionary new chainsaw saw horse that makes the process of cutting logs easier faster and much, much safer. Our, our sawhorse is a unique sawhorse. It's the only sawhorse where you multiple cut logs, the logs are held by the cup system and you simply stack from the cups, or in fact even better, tip the cup system into a container to create your log pile. And we're here today to hope that uh, with your investment and help, we can take our brand and our invention from Cumbria to the UK and to the rest of Europe. Uh, I have some ear defenders for you now to put on while Richard um, gives a demonstration of the, uh, of the device. A somewhat nervous pitch from Richard Bones and Steve Tonkin from Cumbria. They're looking for investment for their souped up version of a sawhorse, a device used to secure wood while it's being cut. Before the questioning can commence, it's time to see the product in action. One barrel full of logs, 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Deborah. Um, so, what are people currently using to chop logs? All saw horses on the market at the moment drop the logs onto the ground, which creates trip hazards. More importantly, most people are cutting one and two pieces of wood at a time. This, you can fill that, and you are multiple cutting. So you are getting at least a hundred to two hundred percent increase in productivity. Bold claims from the entrepreneurs, but can they back them up under questioning from Peter Jones? How many people could go out in their back garden, cut down some trees, put them onto the truncator, then cut their logs? then take them back into their house. What's the reality of that? Is that one in 50,000, one in a million? Um, uh, at least one in, well, I would have thought there'd be a lot more than that. One in what? Well, What's the, what, what I'm well, saying is... Either, how because you, of the market is so big, we can't actually ascertain where it is. I don't think the market is big. I would accept your view, but you're completely wrong. But that doesn't help. No, I accept that it's a thing that isn't within your gambit, therefore you haven't got the knowledge <coughs> to actually ascertain. The no, 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 but you've uses. supposed to got the knowledge and you've come in here with a, with a table that I could get from anywhere, with a truncator yeah. just put on the front as a brand, and you're then telling me that I'm wrong. Mm. Well, give me some facts. We're looking for sales of 1,300 of these units in the first year and that should produce 65,000. Gross profit. Gross profit. We're then going to uh, 3,500, and that goes to the 130. What's, what, what's your net profit going to be in those two years? Do you remember? No. Uh, uh, Sorry, the figures have gone out of our heads. Um, How can we put this? This um, is quite good. Well, um, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say, Richard? I've, this is quite good. 
Is that your humour? It is actually, because okay. we're making a complete mess of the figures. By arguing back and getting the numbers wrong, Richard has ruffled the feathers of the dragons. Is easing the den's uncomfortable atmosphere on Kelly Hoppen's agenda. Can I just say that, you know, everyone that comes in here with an invention, I take my hat off to you. I love the way it chops up the logs neatly. But in terms of a business, it's a flawed business plan. You're talking about all the people that go and buy a chainsaw. It's not going to be people that are chopping down logs for a business. You go to petrol stations, all these hardware stores where they're all bagged mm. up. I think that you're thinking that all of those thousands of people that are buying the chainsaws have got a business. Most people that I know that live in the country actually enjoy cutting down the logs. It's like a pastime. But I don't think you're going to sell enough. Okay. It's flawed. Could I, we, could I say, I'm quite impressed with the pluck of you all telling somebody who does cut logs big time and has done for 50 odd years. So you're saying, that you're unimpressed by us because we don't cut logs, so we don't know what we're talking about when it comes to cutting logs. Yes. Right. Well, what I'm saying is this. I'm unimpressed with you telling us how to run a profitable, successful business. I'm out. Challenging the dragons appears a kamikaze tactic as Duncan Bannatyne walks away from the deal. Piers Linney is keen to steer the pitch back to business and the all-important issue of sales. I don't think anybody here thinks that there isn't a market for this. There is, clearly. Um, the question is, how, how big is that market? And, and, that, and that's where the I'd be surprised if you weren't is. selling £1 million of that product within three years. Yeah, but you sit here and you chuck out words like, you know, that I would be surprised if we don't sell a million of these. And honestly, you, you are surprised at me. Well, I'm really surprised at you not coming up with actual fact. I reckon we'll sell three to four thousand. Then tell me you're going to sell three to four thousand. We will sell far more than three to four thousand. This startup company up to now has consisted of me for two years and Stephen for roughly 60 days. How is time. that helping you, me make a decision on whether or not I invest in you? Because myself, I've sold £9,000 of that product to Hill Farmers and the hardest market you could ever believe and to people that have never bought a saw horse, won't buy anything and I've sold it to the hardest. But Richard, you're missing the point. This is all right. fantastic. Every entrepreneur that comes in here has a story behind mm. them. Every entrepreneur sitting here in front of you has worked their socks off to get where they are today. That doesn't give me the reason to invest. I think you'd be impossible to work with. You always have to look at the person at the end of the day and think, how would we work together? And we wouldn't. We would kill each other. So I'm out. Richard's defensiveness of his product is proving disastrous as an irritated Deborah Meaden bows out. And it looks like Kelly Hoppen has also made up her mind. You've kind of walked in here unenergetic, unexcited about a product that you know I actually like, although it's so out of my sphere of what I do for a living, but I can see that it's, it's a good product. But your attitude is so unengaging. So, you know, obviously you know what I'm gonna say. I'm afraid I'm out. It's fine, thank you. Steve, Richard, it was rubbish. <laughs> Just the whole, not the product, I like the product. I don't get it, I don't live in the country, like some of the other dragons. If I got a chainsaw out of my garden, somebody would probably call the police. But the biggest issue, mm. I think, is, is, is yourself. Right. I just can't imagine working with you and trying to have a straight conversation with you because I think you, th I think, you think you know better. And perhaps yeah. you do when it comes to logging, but it's not just about logging this, it's about no. building a business, isn't it? So I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Four dragons are out. Will Peter Jones be an unlikely saviour 
to what's proving to be a chainsaw massacre in the den. You really should have got onto your numbers. You really should have asked yourselves the questions that you believe would be asked. One day's worth of work before you came in here and you would have been able to answer some pretty easy questions. Um, appalling pitch. And that's the reason why I'm not investing. I'm out. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. It takes a brave person to argue with these dragons, and in the end, it didn't pay off for Richard and Steve. They may have fought valiantly to defend their product, but it only resulted in expulsion from the den. They leave with nothing. <sighs> hey, that was rough, wasn't it? It was a morning and a half, that was. Yeah. Funny. That is a great demonstration yeah. of how to not get an investment. Once they were getting really aggressive, wouldn't accept what I said, uh, I was just wanting to get out of there because I would not do business with the three older dragons in any shape or form. Just, I'd help them out in a life and death situation, but I wouldn't put a slate on their roof for a tenner.